So what I really want to talk to you about um, is your work as a psychotherapist and how do you juggle that with being a worker and how do you establish boundaries? Do you ever have clients who know what you do for a living? Do you ever counsel other sex workers? What would you be your advice to sex workers who are looking for therapy that's non-judgmental and you know, will not immediately pinpoint the root of all their problems is the fact that they do. Yeah, that is like everyone's, sadly, everyone's experience or fear to even have a therapeutic experience. It's, it is exactly what you mentioned. Um, yeah, so I, I am a forward-facing worker and I am also a forward-facing therapist in the same same sentence. So um, my clients do know um, the work that I do. It is something that I disclose. If for some reason they happen to like find me on in, in, in on Google first hit for a therapy and I come up and they have no idea of the other work, which rarely ever happens. Most of my recommendations are sex workers, um, family members of workers, um, people that are in the quote unquote uh, lifestyle that um, are honestly have gone through a couple of therapists where they are like, you know what, the next one better be a performer that is also a therapist. Otherwise, it's a no go. Um, so usually by the time people find me, they're looking for either me specifically through a recommendation or they're looking for a unicorn. And I'm like, hey, that's me in this in this department. Uh, in, in, in terms of boundaries, you know, I I don't um, see people that I've that I work with, and there has been a situation where um, over in the last couple of years, where um, something I filmed and something a client filmed ended up on the in the same on the same um, DVD or whatever uh, series, and that was un, unsuspecting for both of us. It was really surprising and. Um, but thankfully, we had that initial conversation of our worlds may cross because it is a very small world. Um, and when that happens, I will never be like, oh, that's my no. Um, and I will always leave it to you because I am openly disclosed who I am um, to the world. I will always leave it to you to define how you know me, if you know me at all. And um, we talk about like the fact that you know, it, it's kind of like any other therapeutic relationship. If we lived in the same neighborhood, I might see you at the local bar or I may see you grocery shopping and I don't do all this to go grocery shopping. So <laughs> it might scare you, you know, and like we should talk about that. If you're like, hey, I feel like you wear a mask literally. to there. <laughs> um, So, you know, I, I use kind of the very same premise that I would use in any other job. Um. Because the reality is, is it uncomfortable for you to see your therapist outside of your session? And if so, how can we work through that? And if it's something that we don't want to work through, then let's find another and a better match for you. Um, and so that that has usually, and again, most of my clients are performers. So we have already normalized sex and, the, and, and seeing sex for performance and sex for money. Um, we've already come to some agreements uh, on on that by the nature of our work, um, so that tends not to be problematic. Um, in that situation that I shared with you, that was like, oh, this is too close for comfort for both of us. Um, we had a conversation uh, in terms of if we felt that this would hamper our relationship, um, if we felt that we needed to have a face to face to kind of just talk about the raw feelings of like seeing someone in a different capacity. Um, and we both agreed that we did really great work with one another and we were coming to the end of our sessions and we would we could consider this kind of like a, huh, the world is really small and, and be able to move forward. So that, that has been my experience with this um, disclosing. I would share to sex workers if during your first session, if you feel that you're having a hard time articulating what you do for a living or anything that feels a little challenging. And it's not necessarily because it's a hard thing for you to share, but the person sitting across from you is making it difficult for you to find those that verbiage or making it difficult for you to have that entry point. Remember you're shopping and you could like put that dress back on the rack and say, you know what, it just doesn't fit right. I don't know, something about it. And like keep shopping keep shopping. Yeah. 
You know, um, I think oftentimes it's like by the time we agree in our minds to go to therapy and we go through whatever the appointment setting is, whatever the insurance bullshit is, we feel kind of stuck with whoever we meet um, because of the effort that we've put into it. But there's so much like your your return is in that investment in finding someone that you can be fully yourself with. Ask the hard questions. Ask your therapist. Are you a consumer of how do you feel about consumption of push that it's part of our work as therapists to challenge our own biases and to be able to also say you know the things that you present to me i don't feel that i am equipped to do that and so if your therapist can't send you for a second opinion or to uh, make a referral or answer questions that are going to be the difference of you being able to get medical care or not therapy is medical care then Put that back on the rack and, and keep at it. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.